Romans chapter 7, verses 1 through 6, and it reads, verse 1, Know ye not, brethren, for I speak to them that know the law, how that the law hath dominion over a man as long as he liveth. It's like Paul saying, no way. Talking to y'all that know it, there is no way the law can have dominion over you, the entire, your entire existence. Verse 2, for the woman which hath an husband is bound by the law to her husband so long as he liveth. But if the husband be dead, she is loosed from the law of her husband. Verse 3, so then if while her husband liveth, she will be married to another man, uh, uh, she shall be called an adulteress. But if her husband be dead, she is free from the law so that she is no adulteress though she be married to another man. Verse 4, Wherefore, my brethren, ye also are become dead to the law by the body of, of, of Christ, that ye should ma be married to another, even to him who raised from the dead, who is raised from the dead, that we should bring forth fruit unto God. Verse 5, For when we were in the flesh the motions of sins, which were by the law did work in our members to bring forth fruit up unto death. Verse 6, but now we are delivered uh, uh, from the law. Uh, like, like the post office done came and gave you a check from the IRS that you wasn't expecting. He said, but now we are delivered from the law that being dead wherein we were held, that we should serve in newness of spirit and not in the oldness of the letter. Amen, somebody. So this morning, our topic of conversation is the power to change. Uh -huh, the power to change. We already have the power to change. It's a matter of us choosing. Come on here, D. I you, you, got, you want the mic this morning? It, we got to choose, y'all, to change. Because we have been delivered, you can. We have been delivered uh, 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 over uh, to to uh, life, hand delivered, hand carried. So 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 now we gotta choose what has been done on our behalf. We keep thinking that we gotta do something, change, choose to, huh? change desires. So most gracious Heavenly Father, we bless you and we honor you this morning. Have your way in this place through this word, God. Thank you, God, that it penetrates our soul, God, that we're able to see ourselves in the light of Christ as you see us. Your word is already blessed. Now bless us with your word in Christ's name. I pray, let every heart say amen. So in this text, in this text, uh, Paul says in verse one, he's he basically He's, he's asking a question, and, um, and, and t this is how I interpret it. It said, please explain how is it the law shall have dominion over you your entire life. Please, please explain how you going to stay in a state of mind your entire life, meaning, meaning that, you know, when, when some, some we, can, we can explain our uh, behavior when we're five, but when you're 25 doing the same thing as five, it say, like, how in the world are you going to remain in that same mindset and your body has outgrown your mind? That, that's what he, how in the world can, do we stay in the same state and, and uh, uh, our entire life? That's the question that he's asking. Dominion means to rule or to reign. It's also translated as sovereignty or power over a territory. See, can I tell, can I encourage us this morning so to, to know this, that um, our soul, our mind was built to twin something. And so if we, if we, we, we look for ourselves in different, see, we look for uh, 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 ideals, thoughts, the spirit uh, uh, behind a thing to really influence us because that's how we are made. It's nothing wrong with that. It's what influences us is the problem. Yeah. So, so Paul is talking to the ones that know the law. To know means to understand and perceive. And us, the truth of the matter is, I don't think we have accepted as, tr as truth what the, the workings of the law really did to us. 
really, what, what really happened in our mind when, when, um, uh, uh, when we encountered, when we came to perceive or know this thing. So, so Paul is also proving in this text that salvation cannot be found by obeying the law. Obeying the law should show us we need saving. It should show us that we are in error. It should, come, and it did. But we accept as truth that that was us. We accept that as truth that was the fathers that we were going to go in life. Right. Have anybody ever said to themselves, I know that it has to be more in life than this? Okay, long, I'm, I'm just checking because Paul is saying there is no way that you should ride out your life in this one gift. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so he's showing us that the, in, the, in the scriptures even say the purpose of the law. It brought about transgression. It brought a law. It, it awakened in us how to do it. It's like, do not, do not, do not. And when you tell a child not to do something, the stove is hot. You can give them every excuse, don't touch that, the stove is hot. Next thing you know, they're going to come with tears streaming down their eye, and you can count all five teeth they got screaming, eyes wide open, acting like you didn't tell them that the stove was hot. Holding up their finger wherever they got touched at, like, do something. That's all right. So, so Romans chapter 6, verse 23, which ends the chapter before, is how we come about this conversation. You ought to go read it. Romans chapter 6 is really, really good. He says, for the wages, the pay of sin is death. You're ever thinking. You don't expect to live any different than what you are. It's paying you all that it can. So, so but the gift, meaning I'm giving you something, right? The gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Our Lord, I'm giving you something. Do we realize that we will always be under a law? We're going to always, a law means a rule made by an authority, and that must be obeyed. Come on here, somebody. So we're always going to be under something. You don't have to stay under what you've always been in. So here in the text, the two laws that we're going to be under, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus are the law of sin and, and of death. So you got to choose whom you're going to serve. See, see, we've been around a while. So, so we can't say we didn't, we didn't know. Mm -hmm. We can't say that. Then he says, I like this part right here. Let me give you an illustration. For the woman who had a husband is bound, right? A, wo a wife is legally tied to her husband while he lives. But if he dies, she's free. Come on here, somebody. And so he said, if, if she lives with another man while her husband is living, it's obvious that she's an adulteress. Come on, see, this is us right here. So, so uh, 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 we, we don't want them. We, we want one foot in one area of our life and one foot just in case emergency contact for the other area of our life. But Paul is saying right here, here's the example. If that husband dies, that wife is free to go marry. But if that husband is still alive and you choose to go be with somebody else, you are, you got too many men in your lives. Come on here, somebody. In other words, who am I married to? I'm married to one, but I'm placating with the other one. Come on here, somebody. The meaning that my covenant, I'm, uh, my covenant is not a real covenant. Why? Because I'm having my cake and what? And eating it too. See, this is us. But he says something. He said, but if he dies, oh God, why does he keep saying that? She's free to marry another man in good conscience with no one's disapproval in order to have a legit relationship. Paul says somebody's got to die. You either going to stay married and keep that joker alive or you going to let him go on and die so that you can take ownership of what has been given unto you. Uh-huh, yeah. uh-huh. So we keep keeping him alive. We see it dying now. We see it decaying. We see the fruit that it has produced. We see the actions that I have chose to take according to that mind, and I still go try to resuscitate to what? To bring it back alive. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it don't get no plainer than this. But in order to have a legit relationship, something has to die. Come on here, somebody. So, so, so we try to pretend like we don't know what is going on in our lives, but I beg the difference. We know exactly what's going on. What is that, Donna? We want both. I want my husband and my, uh, and my mistress. Come on here, somebody. But Paul is saying this. He says, I'm t- how can it have dominion over you to where you want double vision, to you want an unstable life, to you, you have to be one person in the day and another at night? We want both. But wherefore, my brother, oh, my God, verse 4, God's plan carried out by his son, Jesus, killed off the law, the agreement, the contract that we had with the law. So what Paul is saying to is this. He says, my brother and my sister, you're going to have to let one go because God, I've killed it off. You, you got, it, it, it happened in the agreement. Now you got to get it out of your what? Your members. And see, what we try to do is take on positions in the church and without working out that law out of our members. So the purpose of your position here at Alec is for your development and growth. It ain't for you to sit there and remain the same without ever coming, you forever learning, but not coming into the knowledge of who you are. You are wasting your time and you are dealing with dead things. That's all right. That's all right. So what Paul is saying, what I'm telling you, is something, that law that's running rampant in your mind has to die. That, that carnal law, the, 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 the Mosaic law, the Levitical law. Why? Because I want to marry you. I don't know nobody that wants to be in a relationship more with us more than God. So God plan. He said, I'm going to kill it off for you then I need you to twin me, come and kill it off within your mind. So this, see, this is love. God killed off the law, the old covenant, so that we could marry him, the new covenant. L- listen at this right here. John 3.16 says in verse 17, For God so what? Loved the world that he what? He gave. He freely transferred the possession to us. Freedom. Come on here, somebody. I'm going to kill it off. Look at what God done. And then I'm going to transfer freedom to you. Come on here. Why? Because I what? I love you. And so whosoever believeth, you got to accept this as your truth. See, this is our work in him that we should not perish, that we already have eternal life. Come on here. So, so the, here's the thing, that we ain't... we. Our mind, we're not good enough to, to do this for us. That's the reason why he says, I'm going to handpick you, and I'm going to do it on your behalf. I want you to accept what I have done. But yet, we keep thinking that because we so used to being manipulated and controlled and misused. So, so, so we're not used to somebody clearly loving us and giving to us without a motive, without, without uh, other consequences. Then I got to do something. It can't be this easy. So God sent his son. So, so he delivered. Here, he says, so he delivered his son. Uh, 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 meaning, he, why are we trying to go where God and Jesus is if he delivered him? We, we the ones, come on, let's be honest. I'm just not looking for him in me. You know, I, 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 me, I, I, can, I can deal with that. I can deal with you saying I'm not looking for him in me. But, but what I can't deal with you saying is like you, you just, I just don't know. Yes, we do. So God delivered. I'm telling you, God delivered. God sent not his son into the world to condemn it, but that through the world, him, uh, uh, him might be what? Saved. So when Christ died, so did us. Oh, my Lord. See, we took the law way of life 
uh, down with him and left it in the grave, leaving us free to marry a resurrected life and bear offsprings of faith for God. I mean, it, so, so say it's a done deal. It's a done deal. It's a done deal. I, what the issue is, is I have not accepted as truth that this is done. Let me go check the grave. Let, let me go through the death barrier and resurrection and see what actually, what I come up with. Come on, somebody. If Come on, we don't want to die. We don't want to die to what we know to receive what we know. We don't want that joker in the grave. Come on. So, so he died. So, so we took the law, right? Way of life down with him in the grave, leaving us to rise up to be free to marry this new covenant. It, it's either one or the other. It's, but, but we really believe that I got one foot in and one out. We really believe that John working. No, he's still alive. So you're an adulteress. Because he ain't dead. Oh my God. I have the power to change. I'm giving you this. So our soul has the opportunity to be in relationship with the true and living God. Dying to the law is the means of bearing fruit for God. Think about it. If I die to myself, the only thing, other, other thing that I'm going to do is what is bear fruit for God. That means God is using my life in a way that I don't have to say it, I live it. I don't have to talk about who I am, I live it. And then when he comes within me and, declare, and, and he declares certain things within me, then I take the necessary steps to change. So see, I know I ain't, I know I ain't there where you showing me, but that tells me that I have the possibility to, to uh, become that. Meaning I came, come on here, I came that you what? might have this life. You got to choose it to have it. There is no, it's no issue as to whether I have it. The issue is, am I choosing it? The power to change. The power, meaning the ability. He said, I didn't, I know that thing ran, the, the law ran in your members, and I know you can't do it by yourself because I, you have seen in your life you can't get off on your own. See, when the, the dying to the law means I bear free, fruit for God, meaning my life is no longer used to bring forth this dead stuff, that I'm bringing forth something that's going to live when I'm no longer here. So, so we understand that we are free of the carnal, the law of sin and death, to join, to join another, that we might bring forth fruit unto God. So Christ came so that we might bear the fruit of oneness, meaning joined together with this seed that has been lying dormant on the inside of us, meaning the seed, meaning the creative ideas, the inbuilt word, that wisdom, the voice of God that dwells on the inside of us where we say our gut tells us to say this, but the truth of the matter is we'll hear it, we'll perceive it, we'll know it, and still not do it. Why? Because we have this a uh, law working in our members and I'm going to get to it in a minute but I'm telling you like I said this morning there is no way that you can have a true encounter with God and then you go back check your encounters because it's not about uh, uh, us shouting and, and lifting our hands and running and praising to God everybody can do that but has my mind been shifted ha have the thoughts been rearranged in my world where the Christ in me rises up above everything and I look above for things I don't go beneath My mind, come on here, the internal man, the spirit man. See, that man is not based on anything tangible. It's not based on what you, what we have experienced. It's not based on what man declared I was or not. It's not even what I think about myself in the corner. It's what he says in me that tells me that I'm more than a conqueror. See, let me tell you something. Saving us is not about getting all the tangible things in the world. It's about overcoming that world that I I never thought that I would overcome this about becoming somebody that I had forgot that I was ever that person. 
And yet I still try to prove to people. The only somebody I need to prove it to is who? Me. That's where your confidence come in at. It's like, child, if they don't never call my name. I had an encounter with God. God met me right where I was when I was asleep. I heard this song in my spirit. See, we had, that ain't enough for us when we trying to be seen before man, when I'm trying to prove to y'all who I am. But I'm telling you, there's a joy on the inside that the world didn't give it, and the world cannot take it away. And it doesn't matter about what comes my way. I stand there, and I take it. Can't take this right here. You strip me down naked. You can come take the house away. The car can tear up. I can lose my job. But this joy that I have on the inside is not based on anything tangible. It's based on what I see, what I sense, what I know, what I perceive, what I dream. Fruit is produced from the mind of God that we put to action. Galatians Chapter 3, verse 19 states the purpose of the Old Testament. The Old Testament law, meaning it was added because of transgressions. Listen at this. Till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. So we, we, uh, 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 we, how do I write, how did I write that? It's like we keep acting as if the seed has not come. We, we keep acting like the seed. It's not here. See, see, it was only, you was only supposed to keep that frame of mind, Zan, until you be reintroduced to yourself. And so the battle is, is because I keep lending my ear, I keep inclining my ear because I'm used to hearing what I am and what I'm not. I'm used to hearing all my, what is considered all my mistakes and my flaws. I'm used to hearing that, that uh, I'll never be nothing, that I act just like my mama and my daddy we not used to hearing I love you and that your life has meaning and purpose we are not used to hearing that I called you by your name I, I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb we are not used to hear that I have already validated you I have already ordained you I've already set you aside for a purpose at hand we're not used to or hearing that we are good enough we're not used to hearing that somebody love us and I don't have to give of myself to receive this love. I'm trying to get you to pay attention to where you incline. Your hearing. How can I hear? Come on here. That hearing and I accept that's truth because who said it, it got to be true. Why is it that we can't accept that's truth because God said it and it has to be true. Y'all, y'all keep playing. Keep playing with your life. Can, can we focus on the concept of being dead to the law through Christ? Can we leave here and that be my whole purpose in life? If I don't find nothing else out and if I don't pursue nothing else that I have accept in my being that the law is dead? Ooh, Lord, verse 5. So when we were in the flesh... So it ain't no question as to where we were there. We were there. Come on, somebody. We were there. Come on. Come on. We were there. That human, that carnal man, that old man, that mindset, that state of being, exist, uh, being that our existence, we were there. Come on here. But, but it says when we were in the flesh, the motions of sin, that caught my attention. The motions mean uh, pathema, P-A-T-H-E-M-A of sin, it means the influence of sin were awakened or aroused. Go back and look at it. By the law, which caused us to miss the mark. The knowledge woke up in us, right? The, uh, 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 our, the ability to, uh, 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 it aroused, it awakened us to listening to it. Why? Because the law is all about do not, do not. Do not. You can't do this. You can't do that. Right? And so it, we had to have a knowledge of the law because uh, 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 Ab not Abraham, uh, uh, Adam was asleep. Right? And so God said, put him out to God. And so they went and they was, uh, walked around and did life asleep. And so now we get to the New Testament and he says, uh, now wake up. So we, there was no knowledge 
of the era that was made. So he got Moses and had Moses to what? To start John not on a stone, the law. And so then he gave us the knowledge and then we were awakened to it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Are y'all understanding me? Yeah. Just like you gotta be awakened to the God in you, you were awakened to a knowledge. See, this right here tells us this. Stop thinking more highly of yourself than you ought to. Why? Because we ain't nothing but a pawn. We are being used. The body is being used. The soul is being, and it's at God's mercy. And, and so when we got this knowledge, it's like it's me, because of my adverse thoughts, it's like when you told me I could, that was the very signal to me that says, I'm going to what? I'm going to show you. Even if it what? Killed me. We trying to show somebody something that we're going to be the only ones to benefit benefactor of it. It's only going to affect me. So if I'm showing you, right, I, that's just like uh, you drinking poison thinking I'm going to die. So we, you, we better get some sense. We, we better get some, we better wake up to this awakening. Why? Because that thing take from us. It have us lowering our standards to the point where we're, mis, we're no longer being misused and abused. We turn into the abuser and the misuser and we start victimizing our own self. So, so, so when you tell me something, see, I already believe ain't nothing. You just co-signing that ain't nothing. So now let me show you what nothing looks like and how nothing acts. See, it awakened that knowledge, awakened that on the inside of me, and we think we be doing it. Yeah, I was her. I can't what? Everything I did. Everything. I grew up with a witness when I was on the basketball court. I mean, I'm all, I don't love the game. I mean, just, I see why I have the boldness, but I had to channel it, right? I had to turn it to a balance where God can actually use it. I'm just, bully! It's like, what you gonna do? Your mama ugly, this ugly, I was saying some other stuff. And I'm all in your head, why? Because I know how to get in your head. And I'm standing there and you done lost focus on me and I don't got the ball and gone. That's that intimidation, that's that gorilla that I saw in meditation that was tearing up everything in my mind, uprooting it, why? Because I was this bully thinking that I'm gonna get you before you get me, but I was the only one having to, or the, to have to deal with the consequences of my actions. I sit there and had a whole team mad at me. And I was really, really quick to misusing and abusing my basketball talent, my skills. And so I get the ball and I was quick. So I get the ball and they running after me not to take the ball away from me, but to put my head on a platter. I've been doing that since I was t t probably nine or 10 years old. Pruitt and, and, and Eddie uh, sat up there and watched me miss 99 layups. They couldn't catch me. You remember that? Come to Fitzgerald and they standing out there, get her, get her, get her. Because I don't talk so much noise. So what I'm saying is it awakened your experiences, awakened something in us. And so then we went into defense mode and then we went into protecting ourselves and, and that ego got on the throne and I'd never be hurt again. And guess what? They ain't hurting you. We were doing it to ourselves. Because that thought was running around in our members. So it awakened. That law caused us to miss the mark, to error or to fall short of divine law. So when, when the law said, Thou shalt not, our nature rebelled and, des and desired to do the very thing. It woke, it woke up in us the possibilities okay, if you say don't do it, that means I can. That's all right. Sin is a departure from the law of our being. The command of God to man is this. Be fruitful. Come on here and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have what? There go that dominion. Have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the heavens and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Why? Because we were created what? In his likeness and in his image and in his likeness. It amazes me how 
how we continue to skip over this statement. Nobody goes back to it. Because Genesis means what? In beginnings. Beginnings. So it's like in beginnings we were in this state, y'all. We, he gave us authority. He created this body from the dust of the ground, blew into his nostrils, and man became a what? A living soul. And we have lost our, our, our member, our memory of being this, this living soul. So any failure on our part to exercise this dominion is a mere factor where? In our being. The failure is due to the law that work in our members. Members meaning the body. The Mosaic, the Levitical law has Feel the temple. The law was given, um, was given with a veil over Moses' face, meaning there was no shine. There was no light. Who, who? It's that covering up. Adam and Eve, Adam, where are thou? Where are you? Oh, you scared us. So I went and I covered up. Instead of at that point saying, God, we don't ate from the I have disobeyed. I have went against my own being, who you said I was. Because why? I, I, I was asleep. I went against my, the ability to produce, to replenish, to multiply, to have dominion over my own mind. Oh, God. And so now I went against, I sinned against my own being. And then I start stitching up these leaves to cover up my reproductive. Why? Because I don't want you to know that I have sinned. But if he's God all knowing, he already know what was going to happen. And so instead of turning around right there, no, we, we end up going all the way to the New Testament. And he had to send his son to say, all right, arise up out your sleep, oh, sleepy head that light has come come on here somebody I'm returning back to you your dominion I'm returning back to you that you no longer have this male factor in your being the sin the law was given with the veil over Moses face See, living in the flesh, meaning our body is trapped in sin. See, we, we, uh, living in the flesh means the temple is a physical place. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, so I have the preacher to go on my behalf. The preacher pray for me. The preacher, I give the preacher my hand and confess God my heart. And as long as I'm ushering, as long as I'm preaching, as long as I'm singing, playing instruments, as long as I'm working sound and media, as long as I'm working in the temple, I, I got a home in the kingdom of God. That's your corner man. Why? Because Jesus changed the temple when he came to what? To the body. And so even if you don't come here, but you should, never forsake yourselves of assembling it together get your butt here to church because you need to strength everybody to us together strengthening one another encourage one another to take to take on this change to, to use this power the ability that we have to what to change so so he switched the temple from the physical place to the body so now we are trapped in, we're seeing is trapped in this body. Uh-huh, because we were awakened, it was awakened in us by the law to identify as sin. See, the fruit, the, the, the fruit, the law bear was death. It's, it's a death meaning a prolonged sleep, meaning we're unconscious, unaware of the God within, meaning we, th we believe we're separated from God. So that's the reason why this place is called the church. And I'm going to try to walk, keep the rules and walk this white line so that when I leave here that I'm going to be with God. Although the Bible tells us that he don't sent his kingdom representative here so that he can be with us while we are yet alive, while the blood is what running warm in our vein? I want a living sacrifice. Death is when we make decisions that diminish or shrinks our being who we are. It's the breath. And then we spend our lives trying to cover up our behavior. Galatians chapter 5 give us a clear account of the works of the flesh are manifest, meaning meaning activity, how we know activity involving, uh, uh, works mean activity involving mental or physical effort done in order to achieve a purpose or a result. So he's saying flesh, it has a, a, a goal in mind, which is death, uh -huh. right? So it has a goal in mind. And he said in the works of it, 
it manifests as this because manifestation comes about from the our ability to think. So if the law is in and what we have to accept as truth, so if the law is running rampant within me, then how I know it's running rampant in me, the, 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 the works of the flesh is uh, 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 adultery, fornication. I'm acting like I'm not married to God. Or I'm acting like I'm not married to Frank. Or fornication, I'm just uh, casually sleeping around. Uh-huh, like, it, it's okay. It, like, like, but here's the thing. It's showing you that your soul is looking for the God in you. So there's no condemnation or judgment. Get up and find your real lover. Get up and find the one who married you. It's not in another human being that having a battle in their own members. That's how I... So uncleanliness, lasciviousness, verse 20, Galatians 5, idolatry, false worship, false worship, witchcraft, hatred, variance, immolation, wrath, strife, sedition, heresies, verse 21, envy, envies, murderers, drunkenness, reveling, and, and such like. Listen at this. This was enough to get me, all right, all right, I'm already going in the right place. But I want to stay there and thank you for telling me this. Why? Because it says, uh, 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 and such like, of the, of the which I tell you before, he says, I told y'all this before, as I have also told you in time past, that they that which do these things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Meaning that kingdom that's without observation, that kingdom that dwells on the inside of you, the place where God dwells. Come on here. The living space where God has decided to occupy. You'll never have an encounter with it. You'll never be the ambassador for that kingdom. The kingdom of God can never come through you so that we know that God is real. That's all right. So in order to achieve death, a lot of law to work in your body. And you will manifest all that I just read off. Verse 7 says, what shall we say then? Let's go back to verse 7 of Romans. See, Paul says, what we going to say then? Is the law sin? That, he said, that ain't what I'm saying. He said, God forbid. Nay, he said, but listen at this. This thing is stuck with me. He said, look, no, the law ain't sin. But he said, I had, go back to verse 7 of Romans chapter 7. He said, I had not known sin, but by the law. It ain't sin. The only reason why I knew it, by that knowledge. Did I not say earlier that our soul is looking for something? Our mind has to twin something. And how I begin, to, how I know sin is through what? The knowledge. So if I got, so that's the knowledge that's running in our members. That's the knowledge that I got to do. That's the reason why we act the way we act and do the things that we do. I got to deal with the error thinking. Why? Because that seed, as that, that out of pedendum, right, that out of soul, that, that it's really like it's just out there. It's like a cloud. You know how it is, how they save those. You, uh, you get a cloud on your computer, and you can just put the information out there that the basis is, is just the cloud that's what sin is because in you is your true self and so you have the, you got this outer man right from from this outer knowledge and it's just hanging out there in a cloud way for you to disperse it that's all right that's all right so 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 i had no not known sin but by the law for i had not known lust except the law had said thou shall not covet that shall not desire and so, so, so if, if y'all, see, we making this thing harder than it is. If you accept that that as truth, why the new you, why the, the renewed you, why you can't accept him? Why you can't accept her that you more than all that junk right there, drinking and, and, and sleeping around and being married and, and fornicating, and, and you have all this envy and strife with one another, and we are all made in his likeness and in his image. Oh, God, y'all making me work too hard. But, but it is the knowledge, the knowing of the law and our accepting it as truth. We became a witness of the knowledge in thought, and it showed up in our conduct and in our behavior. Yeah. Uh -huh, but now, come on, say but now. Yeah. 
we, we are delivered, verse 6. We are today, with now is like right now. We are delivered from the law. To deliver means to be severed from, to be separated from the law. To what verse 6 says? To serve in the newness of spirit. To obey, to submit or yield obedience to the newness of spirit. We're no longer delivered. Somebody delivered a letter here. It made it to my desk in there. Delivered. That's how we were. He said, all right, on the left side, let me take you on the left side and let me switch you to the See, y'all think y'all all that. We being shuffled. Over here, all right, let me switch plans, God. Over here, and we get confused because how do you really think the law going to have dominion over you for as long as you live? That's all right. We, have a new, we just have need a newness of spirit. Newness means something different about us, a new condition or a state. And spirit, y'all, is pneuma. It means breath. Listen at this. Do anybody remember in Genesis chapter 2, the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. And what breathed into his nostrils? What? The breath of life. And man became a what? So where is that person? Where, where, is, where is her? Him? No, no, because God is a spirit. And we worship him, we got to do so in. So this ain't about gender. Where is that mind? Where is that breath? that he gave you, and you are alive. Mm -hmm. Spirit and mind are synonymous. Therefore, we have new ideas, new thoughts, new revelation, new insight. We, were talk we are talking, uh, 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 we're not talking the same, uh, and we are not thinking the same. Because what I think comes out my what? My mouth. So, so I, when it does, I have the opportunity to what? If I know that ain't God and it don't came out my mouth, isn't that indications of where I need to work on me? So why we be acting like we don't know? I'm moving on. We have to put ourselves in a position to love, to be filled with love. We have to put ourselves in a position, even if it looked like they're running over us, even if it looked like they're taking advantage of us. When you know who you are, you put yourself out there because you know ain't nothing they can do can, can, can hurt or harm you. You understand that they can say it, they can do it, and yeah, it happened as long as it don't penetrate in here, as long as it don't become my truth in here, as long as I don't end up repeating back what about myself, what they said about me. God, what happened to I can do all things through Christ Jesus? Where, where is that at? What happened to I'm divine, you the branches, and, and I abide, he, who, he who abides in me, and I in him bear much fruit? What, what happened to, for without me, you can do nothing? Come on, is it God who works in you both to will and to do his good pleasure? Where is that at? Where is I'm an overcomer? Where, where, where is the fact that I no longer have to depend on her to show up? The one that was really protecting herself and living out of fear. The fact that them men, I came in first in a half place to them men. Boy, I, my mind been running and not ahead of nothing. Like, how am I going to get them back? They don't know who they're dealing with. My name Donna Donald Lincoln. I'm Johnny, her daughter. I gave her up. And I wanted them to understand. And Frank was like, oh, we trying to decide what we're going to do. I said, you better than me. Because the morning that I had free to get back in here and I had one, well, they don't know I had one. So you ain't hurt my feelings. But here's the thing. I wanted them to know how important they are. So when Prophet Jones come up with, we was trying to figure out what we can do for y'all because we wanted y'all to know, yeah, yeah, okay, we lost. Okay, and y'all spanked us good. But here's the thing. The fact that y'all got up off of y'all seats of do nothing, and say, you know what, I'm going to be active in this ministry. I'm going to take my place back in this ministry. Come on here, somebody. Just because I'm a female, we I understand the order, right? 
And so she's like, she thought about the Burger King. And I said, man, go get him a crown. We can't afford to buy him no real one. Come on here. That's how you build up and you celebrate each other. Why? Why? Because we need each other. And we need each other's strength from day to day to what? To bind together to accept this change that I can do this. To accept this change I can be this. A person that is dysfunctional, they want you, they don't understand peace. They don't understand love, joy, long suffering. So they'll say you acting funny when you're not entertaining it. And it's just like, I just, I know that's death. And see, and what's real crazy is this, is when you can't even tell them it's death working in their members, because they already know everything. So what you have to do is walk away. You have to, because honey, I can't change nobody but me. My learning is for my living. It's like he didn't tell me, and now unless he said it, child, I'm going on about my business. But what are we waiting on to happen for us has already happened. So what we're waiting for is waiting for us. Do I need to say that again? What we're waiting on to happen. See, y'all keep running this here rat race of life. I promise you, you'll never get there. I want you to bring up the picture of the hamster on the wheel. And all he's doing is running in circles. Nothing happening in his life. The same old, he keep getting the same results. And I'm just running in place without ever crossing over the finish line. So when you let go of the oldness of the letter, and I'm finna be done. See, see, the law, that deeply rooted, outdated knowledge of what we are not. Mm -hmm. When we let it go. Come on here. There's a newness. When we release, like Dave, we talked about David this morning. When we release, there's a new order wants to fill the temple, this physical body. Why? Because he wants to bring us alive. And so Isaiah prophesied this in Isaiah 60, chapter, uh, uh, chapter uh, verse 1 and 2. He says, arise from your spiritual depression. This is the message, Bible. To a new life, shine. Be radiant with the glory and the brilliance of the Lord. For your light, meaning your new revelation, your new insight, new idea. Where are your new ideas? Here we are in another year, and I, nobody has come to me but one or two and said, I've dreamed this, I've saw this. Listen, listen, except for one or two. And here we are, hamster on the wheel, finna start over January 1st, in the same state we were in January 1st of last year, January 1st of the prior year. Same thing, sitting there scared to move, because they say I ain't nothing. Because they know what I did. Because they know what was done to me. Being led and guided by death while time is keeping on moving. And waiting for no one. And you keep helping the same people that keep doing the same thing in the same place at the same time every year. They have no incentive to change. You have no incentive to change. But the power lies, well, within us. So rise, verse 2 said, for in fact, y'all listen at this, darkness will cover the earth. That's the prophet. So it ain't no, no uh, 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 if darkness have covered, it will. And deep darkness will cover the people, but the Lord will rise upon you and his glory and brilliance will be seen on you. So it's to see darkness, we be getting our light, light the way things are. Uh, we should be surprised. Isaiah says darkness will cover the earth. And then deep darkness, that means they're going to be in a coma. They, they, don't, they don't understand. they just running through life. We'll cover the people. He says, but you, my chosen, the Lord will what? Rise upon. See, see, I got to go through the deathbed. I got to follow him. Because when he went down, we went down together. So now I got to stop it from running in my members. That means I got to go down to the grave, leave my memory down now, and rise up to the newness of spirit. So, so, so darkness, don't, don't, uh, it don't uh, have me afraid. It's common. That's all right. That's all right. But let's be real, and I'm done. We have to decide what side we're going to be on. The people that are covered in darkness are the ones the Lord will rise up in. 
and his glory will be seen on us. Where y'all stand? Where y'all at? Choose this day who you're going to serve and stop acting like you don't know. Come on here. What side you gonna be on? Deep, covered in deep darkness? Or the light is gonna rise and shine in you, on you, as you? That means I gotta put some work in. You were never intended to live your entire life with the law being having dominion over you as long as you live. What y'all gonna do? The power to change is within you. That means I gotta let one covenant go to receive the new. And when darkness, deep darkness may cover somebody, I'm gonna make sure it's not Donna. Mm -hmm. Think about Joseph and I'm done. Everything in Joseph's life, it looked like it worked against him. And in every area, he became a conqueror in it, right? So at the end of the day, once he went through the trials and errors of life and development and growth, because that's what it is, the same people that, that tried to get rid of him, lied on him, was the same people that he served. Now what y'all gonna do with that? In order to do that, to become that, you gotta have God's spirit. Like the only way I'm gonna serve somebody that I consider my enemy was the fact that God, cause other than that, what you doing here? I ain't giving you nothing. But Joseph was used in a dark time. The light was in Gosha where he was. The provisions was with him. What y'all gonna do? Because if you don't have the mind of God and the heart of God, you'll turn people away that God says he gonna serve them through you. Let me use your vessel to bring something to mankind they ain't never seen. You ain't never seen nobody try to treat people right when you know they done been, they, you done talked about me, you done tried to kill me, with your mouth and then he delivers me take me through all these different things encounters I had to have to become a pastor and say I represent God God called me and the very one that's my enemy comes in here and God don't show up that mean I never learned through my experiences and Randy you either gonna, it's going to be deep darkness among the people or his light is going to shine among you. And the truth of the matter is, don't die. If everything you're holding on to might be the very thing that you need to let go. You keep trying to reset, resuscitate something that's dead simply because you really don't know who you are. You haven't accepted as truth that that hurt is enough, right? And this is about the saddest. You keep, the, you keep going down every time you come. And this is about the saddest that I've seen it. And when I tell you I'm here for you, I'm here for you. But at some point, you're going to have to turn around and say, you know what? If you take it, you take it. And what you're thinking it's about is not about. One thing I figured out when um, God was calling me higher is that uh, he, he don't stop calling. Right? Like, okay. I'll let, I'll let you go. And you keep going. Making it now... Your life is not about the freedom that you have. It's about covering up to try to keep it looking like a certain thing. And can I tell you, it don't look nothing like that. And now you're spending your life trying to cover something up, but it's covering up who you really are in God, right? So you gotta, you, you don't have to. I don't believe in making people do anything. 
But can I tell you to get worse? Because I'm trying to tell you to come back to me. And if it's in the plan, in my plan, you'll have it. If it ain't, when your desires change, you ain't going to want it anyway. But you won't give yourself a chance to save face for them. To save face, come back, Pastor. For Negroes need the same God that you have, that you need. And they talking about you, and then they say, like, how the pot going to call the kettle black? Focus off, right? Now you got that beautiful child, and if you don't, if you don't change patterns, what you think going to happen? Huh? Huh? Okay, so long as you know. So we had a power to change within us. Blondie. Give yourself a break, baby. You're doing good, right? Too hard on yourself. You got, you got that beautiful child. Can I tell you something? Switch perceptions. When I had Portia, it was, I thought it was a bad state. I was in a bad state, right? I wasn't ready to be a mother. And then I took hold the fact, okay, if it happened now, then why? What's the purpose of it? And it was through single, right? Uh, the consequences of having a good time, right? So, so, um, and I thought I wasn't worthy to move forward. And then it was through Portia that I, I, uh, I got saved. You understand what I'm saying? So look deeper with that beautiful baby you have. And you're doing an excellent job, okay? So you're too hard on yourself, right? Stop trying to make everybody else understand you. They don't have to. And stop trying to prove I'm good enough. I'm, I'm, doing, I'm trying to do the right thing. Go in God. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Don't lean your ear to that. You grown now. You don't have to listen to that. Am I lying? You're doing a good job. Find out why you have her. Ask God about that. Why you sent this beautiful baby at this particular time in this way when it seemed like I just done jacked it up? I don't know nobody that can take junk and restore it like God. It's your perception of it. As a matter of fact, just look around at all these junk cars that he restored in here. And start up here first. <laughs> and it's the very ones that said I'd be nothing. Now they want to be my friends. Now I'm keep on moving. But however God say serve, I'm serving. But it ain't going to go no, diff no further than that. Find out why you have her. Ask God those questions. Why I have such a beautiful baby? What did she come to bring me? I ain't, I ain't messed up. Right? You're doing a great job. Yeah, give God a hand clap of praise. The power to change, it's within us. And y'all, we don't earn it, he gave it to us. Right? Did I, did I explain that well? Do y'all have any questions? He gave it to us. 